Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and it is the first weekend in May. And today I want to show you. Uh, so normally in my videos, I'd like to like have one topic that I discuss and then kind of go in depth on whether it's you know a show and tell plant or a couple of plants. Today I've actually got two topics. So the first one will be a show and tell for Phalaenopsis tetraspis that I obtained. I don't know, a couple months ago. It's a cerulea, and it's really nice. I, I really like it. So I figured I'd show it to you guys. And uh, I know that uh, Matt by nature is a huge fan of Phalaenopsis, so he's gonna love this video. Uh, and if you couldn't tell, that was me being sarcastic. But I figured I'd, I'd give him a shout out in my Phalaenopsis video. Uh, the second topic that I want to discuss today is that Catacetum capsule has popped, or I should say two seed pods, two capsules, have both ruptured and there's seeds spilling out. So what I want to do is uh, give a, a quick show and tell of what that looks like. So again, my apologies for having two different topics in one video, but sometimes that's just the way it works. So I'm going to turn the camera around and let's take a look at this Phalaenopsis. All right, y'all. So this is the Phalaenopsis in question. Let me show you the name tag here. Of course, this is Tetraspis cerulea. I'm not sure if you are particularly familiar with the species, but uh, it used to be called Speciosa sometimes, and Speciosa got lumped into Tetraspis. As you can tell, this is a cerulea. It has two spikes on it, that you can see there, with several flowers on, on each spike. This one is, is dead. This one's old and fading. Um, this one looks like it's got decent shape. It's got another one that's just opening up down here. So it's interesting to see that the one that's folding up and dying looks very similar to the one that's opening, but that, that should open up soon. It's got a really nice light scent to it. It, uh, it's just really nice actually. Let me take a look at these other ones. These guys over here that are, are drooping down slightly also have a nice shape and color. Let's go like this. But it seems like more of those pigments, the brown pigments came out in these ones. So my understanding of Tetraspis cerulea is that there is a, um, there's a cultivar, or excuse me, a color out there called, it's, it's, it's sort of these brown, you can see the brown tones in these ones more than these ones. And I don't really know why that happened. So I am gonna pose a question to my, my Phalaenopsis growers out there who watch this, who have grown more than I have. Why are the brown tones in this one more prominent than in this one? Uh, and I started to say moments ago that there's one called, there's a color variety called coffee that is brown. And it's my understanding that the brown and the cerulea are really, really similar. In fact, they might actually be the same genes. Uh, they get turned on and off with one slight variation, turning the flowers brown in some instances or turning them cerulea in other instances. And so I want to know why these are more brown and these are more blue, I guess, cerulea. How do I make that, how do I sort of prevent the brown and promote more of the cerulea? Is that a light situation? Is, do I need to increase the light? Do I need to decrease the light? And I should say that yes, I have changed the lighting somewhat. I think the ones with brown, the ones on the left, bloomed under probably slightly shadier conditions. My, the windowsill that I grow these guys on faces south, and there's an oak tree that had no leaves uh, a month ago or so when this guy opened up, and then the leaves, as happens every spring, became you know, larger and larger. So when these guys bloomed, I think they had less sunlight. Does that make sense? Um, do you know why? You know, it, I'm kind of curious. I might take this to the Houston show next week just to have it, you know, looked at. I don't know that it's actually going to win anything. I've compared these to other 
award photos for Tetraspis and you know the, the size is in line, the shape is nice, the color is okay. Um, you know, maybe it's an HCC, I don't know. But I do want to know about promoting one color type over another. So if you have insight, please let me know. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you. So the other thing that I want to show you is these catacetum seed pods, which as you can see, you can see the, I had this just in the plastic bag for a minute and it, it dumped a bunch of seed, which you can see there. And so if this is actually your first time seeing orchid seed, you can see how incredibly tiny and dust-like they are. And I've got this in wax paper here, or parchment paper. Uh, the seeds tend to stick less in such things. And considering that I will have millions of seeds coming out of here, uh, I noticed this yesterday and I immediately threw it in a bag because as you can see, they are so dust-like and it is windy right now, so I don't want to get too many out here, but what's going to happen is uh, these, these seeds pods start to split at the, the end where the flower was and then it will eventually dry out and go all the way back and this will slowly open and just dump millions and millions of seed coming out. And you can see, like I said, how incredibly dust-like these are and there's just going to be millions and millions of them. So. This is that cross that I made uh, back in October, and it is uh, Black Knight, Catacetum Black Knight is the pollen parent, and the pod parent is Catacetum Yusef Niazi. As you can see, both of these flowers are very dark, and so I'm really hoping that the progeny come out very, very dark as well. And I, I'm super excited to have these, to make this cross, I think it's gonna be really, really an interesting one and you can see how big the bulbs are and so I crossed these in October so you can you know it's it's early May now so you can tell how long that took for these to mature fully I'm gonna send these uh, the dried seed actually to my friend Frank in Louisiana and he might do some things with it well he, he's gonna have it flasked for me which is very nice of him and um, you know, I think this will be a really cool new hybrid, and I will certainly keep all of you updated on what happens with it. Of course, for those of you that don't know, uh, orchid seed in the wild will typically will typically fall onto a tree, where it's preferred. Uh, the epiphytic types will, will fall into a tree, and there's a fungus that will infect the seed and then there's a symbiotic relationship for at least a little while where the the fungus helps with the food giving food to the seed and then actually the once the plant gets big enough it actually absorbs the fungus i think it actually kills it all so it's it's not a symbiosis that everybody wins but the, the fungus does survive and win for at least a little while in captivity of course we put them on on agar jars and grow them in sterile conditions until they're large enough to pull out and then we put them in community pots and then of course they, they grow slowly until they're mature blooming plants so anyway uh, i don't want to belabor this too much i hope you guys have a great weekend and i will talk to you later bye